Hello there fellow model makers. Time to start putting this kit together. But before we add any new pieces, we should clean up all the existing seam lines. I have always found cleaning up as I go along easier than gluing everything together and then trying to clean the seams. I will use this sanding stick to first clean up the seam behind the wings. As I sand, I keep checking how smooth the surface is by running my finger over it every now and then. Another good indicator of your progress is the color of the part itself. Here you can see that while I have sanded smooth almost the entire surface, a thin strip of plastic still retains its original color. This would indicate that the strip is low and the sanding stick has not been able to reach it. As I sand further, the difference in the color disappears. This entire surface is now even. but the sanding has left it rough so now i will smoothen the surface first by using a 1000 grit sanding sponge next i graduate to an even finer 1500 grit sanding sponge and lastly i polish the surface up with this polishing stick I do not use the sanding stick on curved surfaces as they make them flat and then it's impossible to restore the original curve. Instead, I use sponges. Once again, starting with something like a 320 grit and working my way up to a 1500 and finally a polishing stick. I have cleaned up the parts that make up the air intake. Before we glue these together, we need to drill holes in for attaching weapon pylons later. I have only drilled tiny holes to act as markers. If need be, I will widen them later while gluing the pylon. Though there are only 3 parts to the intake, they are a little fiddly. Also, please be careful that you use the exact parts mentioned in the instructions. Although the parts appear to be interchangeable, especially the flow plate, they are not. You will run into problems later if you use the incorrect parts. Right. Time to add weight to the nose cone so that we don't end up with a tail sitter. I am using these metal screw driver attachments that I don't use anymore. I flood the nose cone with some glue and then set it aside to dry. Just make sure you find a place where the piece remains upright so that the glue doesn't leak out. The air intakes have a huge seam line running down the joint. Here, I have used a filler putty, in my case, Mr. Surface 500 to fill the gap. Next, I will sand it down pretty much the same way as before, starting with the sanding stick and finally finishing off with the polishing stick. Next, I add the photo etch air intake grill. I don't have a photo etch tool, so I simply improvise. It's not that difficult considering it's a simple bend. As I bend, I keep checking the angle.
and some super glue to fix the grill in place. The wheel wells on the kit need to be shaped. I do this by first placing the air intake in its place. The intake has the indentation that fits over the wheel well. Then using a marker I color in the part that has to be removed. I use a hand drill to slowly sand away the plastic. I repeatedly redraw the indentation to ensure that I don't overdo the sanding. Finally, the finishing with a mini file. And a rub with sanding sponges to smooth things out. Time to paint the intakes. Because of all the sanding and filling that we have done, it is essential that we clean the area to be painted properly. I use some alcohol and a clean, well, relatively clean cloth. The fans are painted steel. The instructions suggest that the intakes be painted light blue, like the rest of the underside of the kit. However, when I checked on the net, I found that the most common intake color was grey. Once the paint is dry, I glue the intakes in place. There is a gap between the intake and the fuselage but I don't think it will be too hard to fill later with some putty. Now the tricky part, painting the exhausts. I have absolutely no experience painting these. So this was to prove to be a learning experience for me as well. To compound the challenge, I found that there was little consensus on how to paint these on the net as well. The first thing I did was to make a sort of a color test palette with all the paints that I felt I could use. These included several silver, and aluminium metallic paints and some true metal paints. I finally decided to go the more metallic route. To start with, I painted everything black. Next, I painted the inside of the exhaust by dry brushing some grey, white and brown on the inside. I use some pale burnt metal to paint some panels. Next, I painted random panels with brass. The idea is to use these paints, especially the brass, as an undercoat for the final burnt metal finish. Hopefully, this base layer will add tonality to the final finish. Next, I added some burnt metal over the panel lines. I 
I tore the hard part of a sponge and I sprayed some brass and copper through this for some patches and corrugation. And this is what I got. I added some burnt metal for panel lines and a little bit of transparent blue to round things up. Lastly, I gave everything a very light coat of pale burnt metal. The undercoat did show through. Unfortunately, it doesn't really show through in the pictures. I then masked all the parts I had painted and the cockpit and added all the other big pieces of the kit like these stabilizers. No score gets glued in now. Right then, this kit is ready for the next stage, putting, sanding and painting. But that will have to wait till the next part. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Till we meet next time, good luck and have a great time modeling.